beyond my pay grade. I do not have any idea. Uh, I was on the Ways and Means Committee, so I am somewhat familiar with how much the cigarette tax brings in. And you just heard the governor. The DRA is sending out something. We have more? No, it's down in the office. They send us a sheet. OK. So it would be quite easy to calculate based on. It's not a physical number. Um, well, you could easily decide how many you were projected to sell, and I would say use about 10% of the population smoking X number of cigarettes at X number. It's a calculation that can be done. Just like we can calculate in, revenue, in Ways and Means Committee, they can estimate how much we're going to take in with the business profits tax and the rooms and meals tax and the cigarette tax. I don't think it would be as much as cigarettes, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, in an ideal world, I wouldn't tax it at all because I'm not a big taxer, as you probably know. But I've also come to realize I live in the real world and that if you're going to tax cigarettes and tax alcohol, you certainly ought to treat marijuana equally and tax it. Thank you, Representative. We're glad to have you with us. I try to occasionally come down to a lofty cloud. <laughs> and then great. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Huffman. Uh, a great deal of your testimony seems to focus on criminal justice and, and legal kind of stuff in terms of prosecution of, of, uh, of uh, users and that kind of thing. And, and I, I just wondered how much of your goal would be accomplished by decriminalizing rather than legalizing. Well, I mean, to me, we're playing word games here. Uh, in the Netherlands, I can never figure out if it's legal or decriminalized or what it is there. But to me, you ought to be able to do it, whether it's decriminalized or whether it's legal. But at the same time that you do it, you probably ought to be able to tax it and raise money off it. So a road by any other name, as long as you're not throwing somebody in jail or arresting them for doing it, if we're quibbling over words, I'm not all that concerned. But I, again, base this on what Colorado did. Not because Colorado is all wise, but because it was approved by 55% of the voters there, and I suspect our voters are just as intelligent as the voters of the Rocky Mountain State. Uh, oh, yes. Well, okay, so if it's decriminalized, we wouldn't necessarily gather the revenues from taxation, perhaps. Correct. But wouldn't, wouldn't we also save a lot of money in um, lack of prosecution in court time? Well, we would save a lot of money in that if we legalized it as well as if we decriminalized it. So which, which, which difference does it make? We spend a tremendous amount of money not only on prosecuting crimes that should not be illegal, but on incarcerating people, as you know on this committee, about 35000 per year per person in prison. So, I mean, there are many levels of crime, uh, of costs that we incur because of the illegalization of this. Whether you call it decrim or total legalization, I just decided, go for all of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it used to be a radical idea, but it's no longer radical for me. Call it what it is. Decriminalize. Nobody would force you to smoke. Just like nobody forces me to have a gin and tonic, and I basically do not drink. Occasionally, you might have seen me have a beer at a little party. But I basically gave up drinking. My mother died from cirrhosis of the, not liver, but the colon. Um, but that's my choice. If I want to smoke a joint and get less high than if I drink a lot of liquor, you'll notice that people that are on marijuana are less aggressive, cause less physical problems than people on alcohol. I don't believe it's anywhere near as addictive, so it's my choice. I'm a libertarian. I believe that government should basically leave me alone unless I'm hurting you. And I'm not hurting you nearly as much by smoking a joint as by putting down a couple of six packs and causing a fist fight. Representative Grady. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative Valancourt, uh, when you did your comparisons with other states and with other countries, um, was the age of 21 the standard limit? No? I didn't do the comparison. This okay. is, these are studies that have been done by, right. by experts. And if you'll look at the multi-page document on the Netherlands, that gives all that data in there. And I believe, where is it? It's right on the very first page. Here it is, right here. On the United States, it was age 12 and up. On the Netherlands, it was 15 to 64 by this, by this source collection. Okay. And I mean, 
even if you use slightly different age levels and you manipulate the figures a little bit, this is basically given to you only to give you an idea, mm -hmm. not to say it's exactly that way, because statistics in this are so difficult to attain. But that's what this document here is, and it shows you where the who conducted the surveys as well. Follow up, ma'am. Uh -huh. um, well, thinking of that age of 21, um, I assume that you believe that that would be a reasonable course for New Hampshire to take also? Again, you're talking about the real versus the ideal. Right. The bill calls for 21. Okay. I personally, in my real, in my ideal world, would go lower than that. Right. But we're not talking about Steve Valancourt's ideal world. We're talking about what's best for society. So therefore, um, would, you, would you support um, a follow-up with, with this and some kind of alteration of amendment? Of course, once a bill comes before yes. a committee, it's no longer mine, it's in your possession. And originally, I was hoping that you would retain all three of these bills, spend the summer looking at it, maybe get some more data, and maybe some other states would weigh in and work on it then. I wouldn't, for a minute, think that this bill is going to pass in its current form. Do you think then, um, I guess that's the, the next part of that question, um, should there be a penalty for someone using um, marijuana under the age? The same penalties we have for alcohol and cigarette usage. Although I think cigarettes is 18, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I would suggest that the penalty should be similar. I don't think any of the children here should be smoking marijuana. That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ian. No more. Something to look forward to, though. <laughs> 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 Just a joke. Oh, you are <laughs> We've got to have humor. <laughs> I will call Emily Simon and Alan Flidden from the youth to you. on a variety of tobacco, alcohol, and drug-related issues. Our group consists of about 70 members split up into four teams. We meet regularly each week and plan activism events to influence our peers in our community. And we often take on statewide issues as well. We oppose House Bill 492, as well as House Bills 337 and 621. But our comments on this bill will apply to all three. And in the interest of time, we'll only be speaking once. And understand that we want points to be considered for all three bills. The main reason we oppose this bill is that we feel it will lead youth to think that marijuana isn't harmful as it really is, leading to risky and dangerous decisions. Marijuana is a hazardous substance. It can cause panic attacks, anxiety, paranoia, depression, and in 2010, it was involved in 461,000 emergency room visits. Marijuana is also addictive, not with a physical addiction, but with a mental addiction. And with all of these consequences, it's clear that marijuana is harmful to your health, but the passing of this bill would reinforce the wrong message that marijuana is harmless. Even with these facts about the dangers of marijuana, my peers at Dover High School are already using it, using it at a scary pace. Based on Dover's recent school-wide survey, well over a quarter of all DHS students report using marijuana in the last 30 days. And this is consistent with the numbers for the rest of the state of New Hampshire for marijuana use. And even 15% of our 8th graders have used marijuana in the last 30 days. In the high school, the reported rate of marijuana use is higher than the rate of smoking cigarettes. So in the past 30 days, smoking cigarettes at Dover High School is at 20% compared to 26% for marijuana. Students are more likely to see tobacco as dangerous, even though smoking is smoking. Marijuana smoke actually contains three times more tar and five times more carbon monoxide than a cigarette. It also has 50 to 70 percent more cancer-causing chemicals than tobacco smoke. In a 2011 study, students from grades 7 to 12 were asked about how harmful the use of certain drugs, including marijuana, seemed to them. 
75% of our 7th graders perceived marijuana use as harmful. When we asked the 12th graders the same question, only 33% saw, 33 saw it as harmful. The passing of House Bill 492 will not only send a bad message to kids now, but a bad message in the years to come. House Bill 492 needs to be stopped because not all young people are equally informed of the dangers of marijuana. What's stated in the law is sometimes the only thing a kid will listen to before making a really dumb decision. In conclusion, the passing of this bill would be reinforcing the incorrect belief that marijuana is harmless. So we oppose House Bill 492 in its entirety and strongly hope you will as well. Thank you for your time. Um, we have copies of our testimony and if you have questions, we'd love to answer. Anyone have a question for Representative Gagne? Thank you. Thank you for being here with your testimony for one thing. You have guts to do this, so I admire that. <clears throat> My question would be, when these kids who smoke marijuana, are the parents aware, in your, if you remember, are the parents aware, and what happens? Um, well, in my opinion, like, I know many kids in my school who smoke marijuana. Most parents do not know that their kids are smoking. They don't suspect it. And I'm pretty sure it'd be hard as a parent to recognize or even confront your child that may be using drugs. So some kids know. Some parents don't even do anything about it. Some parents would do something about it and make sure they make a difference. But most parents are not informed. I know at my high school, um, Dover, a lot of kids that parents do know about it tend to get lower grades and care less about school. And many of them that whose parents do know, their parents aren't involved a lot with them, and it causes most of them to drop out. Representative Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, you compared this to tobacco. Do you have any idea in physical amounts? Comparing a marijuana user to a tobacco user in the poundage. Okay, follow up. Follow up. You assume it's the, the volume that I take in that with either that would cause the problems that tobacco does as far as cancer, and emphysema, and asthma. Um, yes, the amounts matter as well as all the chemicals in each substance. So the amount would matter? <laughs> yes. And, we, and do you think those who use one use the same amounts as use the other? Um, that'd be hard to say based on individual users. I'll take a guess. Um, I imagine a <coughs> tobacco smoker would smoke more for this. A more of a physical dependence, and they would probably bump up their immunity so they have to smoke more cigarettes. Thank you. Representative Ginsburg. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was hesitating to ask you a question. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Robinson, you shouldn't have asked that question. I, I asked it on the basis of 337, <laughs> not 492. Okay. Uh, I was hesitant to ask you a question because. I didn't want to <coughs> intimidate you, but it's very clear from your presentation that you were in no way intimidated, <laughs> and that you're very much in charge of the facts, and of your argument, and of your opinion. So I would like to ask you this question. You, you spoke of the message that, that this bill would send to, to young people if it were a law. Um, would it affect your feelings about it if I pointed out to you that the bill sends the message that using marijuana is illegal and undesirable for people under the age of 21 and that we do not want you to do it? I feel like if you legalize it in any way, it's showing that when you are older, that it's okay. And we all know, and especially from personal note, that kids, like for alcohol, you needs to be 21 to legally drink it, but kids will still drink it anyways because they can think in their mind, well, if I'm older, then it's not going to be as harmful. And it's kind of taking the same idea that if you smoke marijuana when you're older, it's 
there's going to be some dangers, but it won't be as bad. And the kids will be thinking that and be like, oh, well, I'll, I'll just uh, skip ahead a few years while I'm just going to do the same thing. Thank you very much. Representative Fields. One quick point. I'm very honored to see the students. You're going to show me nice. And I appreciate what you went through for the research. The thing that I, that I wanted to ask you was, we talked about the marijuana at your school. And actually, I don't know if there's other drugs at the school that's going on because, and then the other thing is, who's growing the marijuana so the kids get it? Do you have any idea? There would be no way to know. It's, um, it's probably a variety. I mean, I hear of kids growing marijuana in As Clark, I want to thank you for your handouts, but I am also very jealous that you had the ability to read your statement two feet away with a 10 font. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no more questions, thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> Representative Joel Winters. He had to leave.